We're meeting today in discussion for Isabella Pluta's exhibition, Nihil Article. I hope I've said that correctly. An exhibition that is a complex exhibition that's brought together a bunch of uh, different works for Isabella, curated by Jose de Silva at the UNSW Galleries uh, on until the 6th of March. And we're talking today, we're in conversation, Isabella and I, I'm Consuelo Cavanilla, and we're talking about a bunch of, hoping, hoping to draw out a bunch of ideas around uh, this particular exhibition, but also some of the streams of ideas and ways of working in Isabella's practice a little bit more broadly. So before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are separately working and uh, living at the moment. So a, a bunch of acknowledgements because we are scattered around at the moment. The exhibition is on the lands of the Gadigal and Bidjigal people, and I'm currently situated in the Manungunawal country in Canberra for a short amount of time. And Isabella is actually living on Warami country, but uh, at the moment on Gadigal and Bidjigal country. Um, so we're all scattered around, but I, I think it's, it's always important to acknowledge the country that we are operating from and that we're living in, not in the least because of the kind of ideas in Isabella's practice as well, and the ideas of location and the questions about where we stand and ideas around mapping and so on. And I think the idea of um, acknowledging the traditional owners is also about the layers of occupation that a lot of um, Isabella's work uh, is concerned with as well. The ideas of mapping and the kind of layer of almost um, sometimes fiction that comes out of the, the idea of mapping um, and certainly the way that Isabella's work sort of dispels the idea of how a map can give authority over a, a site and a location. So site and location are really important parts of, of the way that, um, that she's worked in, in a lot of different locations around the world. So thank you for the people who are joining us today. Isabella and I have known each other for a long time. So hopefully <laughs> this is a bit of a, a kind of a, a, a loose conversation around, a, a, as I say, a bunch of ideas in her work. So. Isabella, just starting from maybe I'll just I'll just talk about that idea of locating. I think uh, there was something that I read in in um, in a text that spoke about one of the exhibitions um, related to to this current exhibition. It was the about the uncertainty of location, and that's something that seems to be key to this particular exhibition, but also a lot of your work. Um, uncertainty of location in terms of, um, and that uncertainty being, um, I always think about it really, really being tied to time um, mm. and also being tied to history as well. This exhibition is interesting because it's also something that you didn't see in its original kind of, or um, first iteration in Valletta in Malta because we couldn't travel. So you mm. weren't able to actually go and visit the first uh, iteration of or part of this exhibition. Now it's been um, restaged. You've seen the work in the space and through the filter of also um, Jose's vision as the curator for the exhibition as well. Mm. So what are the types of things that are coming up for you in terms of revisiting your work in, in, in terms of um, seeing it? now in space altogether as a body of work and also some of the things that that Jose is attached to it uh, or has has um, grown uh, out of that initial conversation um, there's a bunch of questions in there maybe I can just get you to start mm. sort of talking about the idea of location and coming to both the origin of the work and also revisiting the work now now not virtually mm. uh, even though we're speaking virtually Mm. Yeah, I think there's there's sort of um, you know there's there's the new work that I've developed uh, over the sort of the last sort of twelve months in relation to the show here at UNSW Galleries, and then um, that's sort of been made as a sort of reaction to or just as a follow natural sort of follow on from the work that I developed for uh, the Spazio Creative um, that was shown in Valletta 
early last year, uh, which I wasn't able to travel to, uh, which followed earlier work um, as it does, um, that, that kind of took me diving. And I think that that's sort of, that's sort of the beginnings of this potential sort of trajectory, um, this idea of diving physically and sort of that, that sort of embodied experience that lifts you away from or lifted me away from a very, uh, you know, a way that I was doing things or making art um, and experiencing sort of moving through certain places and responding to places um, when I when I sort of needed to, and it was a bit of a means to an end, making um, work, you know, through underwater sort of experiences. Um, it kind of changed a lot and it made me think a lot about um, how that, um, you know, what the relationship is to that I have to, to sort of the ocean or what what the experience of being under there in that blue space, that sort of that space that doesn't have gravity, um, that doesn't sort of weigh you down. In fact, you, you know, you become really quite unhinged and 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 without orientation. Um, this this kind of happened kind of, I guess, concurrently with finishing a work uh, which ended up as an artist book as well, um, spatial uh, misalignments for uh, the Art, art Space Ideas platform. And, and so, yeah, so it was kind of mapping, kind of really unpacking through a kind of, I guess, serendipitous encounter with a particular atlas. Um, and, and then those two sort of things, I guess, have sort of coalesced to be clearer in in my mind that sort of you know as we make work as artists right it becomes um a sort of intuitive pursuit and it becomes sort of loaded with things that you're looking at and you're reading and and the way I guess I'm making the work in the darkroom as well which maybe we'll sort of yeah we'll sort of talk about that as well but but I think um yeah I might yeah I think that's sort of those two key things have finally come together and I think and I think I'll just I'll just finish up I think I, I think I sort of feel like you know the experiences in in in, in Japan and and in Malta in, in relation to those two specific sites the Yonaguni monument as it's sort of its common sort of name and uh the Izuri window the Duera which is the fallen sort of sea arch in Malta um you know the way that I developed the work in response to those two sites has um you know started this whole sort of this exhibition I guess but then as Jose and I sort of discussed the sort of possibilities to expand the show you know he sort of brought into it um these previous works which you know really make a lot of sense it's maybe the second part of that question right in terms yeah. of what on earth I've been doing for the last couple of years <laughs> Yeah, and it's nice to have the connections. I think, I mean, I've seen you sort of work with mapping for a long time, actually, um, and in different mm. ways. Um, and I guess that that sort of location, to go back to that word of the, that, that idea of location, I think it's, uh, it, it's also through our friendship also interesting to have heard you speak about the places mm. that you visited and the encounters and the things that sort of come from them and then see the work in response to them. And I think one of the things that is always uh, that I've always enjoyed about your work as well is the way that the the idea of the location is also really tied to audiences in some ways. So I'm thinking about very early work of yours mm. where you um, photographed sites and then blew them up so that they were, I guess, almost one to one scale mm. in the gallery and wallpapered mm. onto the um, onto the gallery wall. Mm. And so the way that you encounter a site is not is not the mappings that then you that then you kind of dispel the authority of through the process of the contact printing and so on. And and similarly, so you you respond to a site, you visit a site, you you document, maybe document is not even necessarily the, the right word. And in the gallery, you mm. also relocate the audience. So you put the audience back in the space. You don't allow the audience to understand a site in its entirety. You give mm. them a fragment, and a fragment, mm. of course, is something that always comes up in your work as well and continues to. It's mm. changed in the way that you've you've related to the fragment, I think, over time, but you, you continue to engage with the idea of the fragment. Mm. But the viewer in the space is in the space with you. You're almost... Mm. Em, 
you're almost placing them in that. In that. So, so this idea of locating, you can locate, the audience is able to locate mm. oneself or, them, or themselves within that site as well. They're not mm. removed. They're not looking at a small image that is an overview, a panoramic or something that allows them to have that distance. Distance, they are actually within that space. Mm. And I think that's also something that um, comes out of some of the more recent works, which are really immersive, like the scale of the work, I think, is always really um, important to the effect in, mm. the, um, in the gallery. Mm. I don't know if you want to um, mm. maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think this, um, you know, obviously I've, I made the work for, for the institution in Malta, but I never saw it installed um, there. I, I installed it here in Sydney um, as a sort of test run a little bit before that, but that wasn't really complete and, and sort of, you know, it wasn't finessed as, as, as you would say, right? Um, so I think, yeah, it, it's sort of it, doing the, the project here, it gave opportunity to really think about how, you know, what I intended for the work, and I guess I'm referring to variable depth, shallow water, the sculptural sort of installation that is a sort of structure or an apparatus, as I like to think of it, um, which maybe sort of, uh, you know, also hints to things like a camera that has mirrors that sort of reflect and, um, and deceive the viewer. But what I really wanted with that work was, I guess, what you're sort of saying, this, this sort of um, to ask a viewer to to kind of navigate to sort of to deal with how to and where to where from approach images that images are sort of available for viewing but at the same time there's an obstruction or a sort of wobbly or clumsy sort of um, angle that you might um, approach the work or individual photographs with so there's this sort of looking into onto but then a sort of distancing simultaneously um so yeah I think that's always been really important and I think like actually um I mean I don't like using the word potentially immersive because that's not really um I think what I do but I think there's that there is this body the body uh and how it relates to the work in a space has always been really important and I think that's why when diving, and I say that when, and I should say it's probably also finished. I'm sort of so done with the diving. Um, you never uh, know. <laughs> I know. I never know. I never know. Uh, but you know, but, but those experiences, how they they evoke for me the, what I want to do with work, and mm. and sort of behaviours within a physical gallery space that that enable um, that sense of disorientation that, that are parallel with, with diving. So, yeah, it's really, really important. Mm. Um, I like the fact that you're making a distinction about that idea of immersive, that it isn't quite immersive. And I was also thinking about the, the idea of atmosphere in relation to the work, but I almost feel like that's not entirely mm. right either. Mm, no. um, but I think both of them, in, in relation to both of them, um, in considering the work, I was also thinking about your... Uh, your ongoing connection to architecture mm. um, and architecture I was thinking about in relation to site more than relation to structure and mm. I was thinking that one of the distinctions maybe is in this particular exhibition where you do have the structure and so I'm interested in the fact that you said it's a structure but it's actually an apparatus and so instead mm. of going back to the, the the built environment in relation to architecture, you're actually going back to photography through that structure. Mm. So it's it's a different series of of um, of sort of connections and connotations to, to mm. that. Yeah, I think um, I sort of feel like uh, you know I mean I'm clearly very obsessed and, and and sort of with photographic principles or ideas, and it's sort of always really in of the work as well but the ideas around photography and uh the practicalities of it the, the kind of making mechanisms the the way that we see or think we see something you know really important as well and I mean someone just pointed out today because you know I, I met someone at the gallery earlier today uh they pointed out that 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 uh the work uh camouflage so from the camouflage series was, which is the, the singular photographic I would say um, work for very sort of true you know straight photograph large format there it is color um, 
you know, that I, she, she sort of reminded me that I haven't done that for some time, you know, that mm. it reminded her of sort of earlier work. And I really completely agree with that, that I feel like over the last few years I have sort of, not consciously, but things have led me to away from that potentially for a while or it, it hasn't been as, as sort of visible in the practice. And I think I needed to explore uh, other ways um, of, of making. And, and I think part of that is, is also not necessarily being able to travel as freely as, as I did when I was in my 30s. Um, and so I don't know if that was conscious or not, but anyway, but I think things, some things have changed as well in, in how I work, but also embracing certain processes that I'd use but haven't really explored deeply, like contact printing, mm. like working with, with, with objects in the dark room that have a particular historical or, you know, cultural political significance have become really important. And I feel like those kinds of images are sort of become more loaded in my mind than the other photographic works that, that I have made. Anyway, yeah, it's a sort of, it's a kind mm. of endless conundrum, but I guess I just sort of follow my nose. I think there's, it sort of brings up two sort of strains of conversation um, uh, out of that. I mean, one of them is, is to think about how flexible you are as an artist as well, that you really sort of work across, you're not, fixed to a, a certain way of understanding photography or exploring photography mm. but but nothing else either so you you make books and you make um installations and you uh wallpaper photos onto mm -hmm. the wall you, you know, <laughs> and then you also frame them and and maybe go with something that's a little bit more standard or, or more expected of a photographic practice mm. And I guess one of the things that I feel like might be maybe more of a recent shift, or perhaps not, is the introduction of other materials into your practice mm. as well. So you're really expanding out. So printing onto fabric and then the fabric becomes certainly not flat in the space, but becomes something that has volume. And, and, and maybe that's why I was sort of thinking about the idea of immersiveness or, mm. or the atmosphere and the involvement mm -hmm. in the, um, in the gallery space as well that is um, that, that has I guess it's about the physicality of the work in the space as well yeah I was just thinking of that exact word as you were as you were speaking yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I guess yeah when, when I think of physicality it's it's very much been a way of you know using and sort of engaging with the photograph and and also at the same time thinking how I can I guess orchestrate maybe because it is quite um, sculptural, but it is a little bit, uh, it's fabricated, it's a kind of constructed um, work, if I think of variable depth, shallow water, but also the way that, um, you know, I developed work last year, or, sorry, a few years ago now, um, for apparent distance for the National, as well as a recent commission that's mm. about to open in Bundanon. Um, I, I'm really, yeah, I think there's there's something about um, scale obviously being one, and I think that's to work with, you know, it's, it's with caution that I work with scale. Um, and, in fact, something really lovely that's happened with this show is, you know, Jose and I walked in at some point early on after it was hung and I sort of went, I, ha I have made a series of photographs, many series of photographs, and I, I was quite I was quite proud, you know, um, because I think the last few years have been a little bit, you know, I, I do move, I do, you know, flow between um, different modes of working. So it was really lovely to, to see that, which I didn't know why I didn't see that until I sort of stepped, you know, foot in the gallery. Um, but, but back to sort of the, the sculptural, you know, I started working in ceramics when I was at art school. That was my thing. So it was very much a sculptural practice. Uh, practice, And I, I worked with clay. I hand built. I, I was never able to throw on the wheel, although I've just come back to it now, you know, playing around a little bit, um, as you know. And um, and so I think there's always been, you know, whether it's sort of looking at architectural or spatial kind of interests that, that, that working with a certain three-dimensionality or at least experiencing a two-dimensional work mm -hmm. through a three-dimensional sort of lens, if you like, or a structure, um, seems to be what sometimes works. And it, I guess it depends on the work, right? I mean, we've been in studio conversations together, like some, you know, some work doesn't mm. evolve to be that and others do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I guess that also ties to your um, consideration about space. 
um, which is both spatial in terms of when you're in a site and understanding the mm. site through, you know, the spaces that you physically encounter and also space in terms of, again, that relationship to architecture, but mm. then also the space of, uh, I guess, um, the photograph itself, the sort of spatiality of photography mm. and what it is that you're able to sort of overlay in terms of different spaces and so on, which you often do in the work. And I guess mm. uh, in some ways also some of the materials that you're using that now have uh, a reflective quality as well and bouncing light around that kind of gives you an ability to um, to affect the space or to affect this this idea of spatiality I guess in a in a particular way as well which is really interesting mm. as a as an expansion or a return or a yeah um, uh, I feel like there's a lot of things that sort of I guess with a lot of practices, you pick up on, you leave behind, you pick up mm. on again later on and, and develop in a slightly different way. Um, mm. Maybe in relation to the idea of also what you were saying about histories and so on, I'd like to maybe come back to the idea of fiction in the work and perhaps also relate mm. that a little bit to um, photography mm. and the relationship of photography to fiction um, mm. or reality. Um, mm. And is there something that you can, um, can, can you talk a little bit about that in terms of some of the mm. things that we see in this exhibition, but also perhaps also some of the things that you have been looking at for an amount of time. So, for example, in the maps, um, mm. something that is an authority in terms of this is what uh, these places look like, this is what this land looks like, you're sort of, uh, negating those by confusing mm. the information that they actually give mm. us um, and in terms of uh, you know the relationship of the drone to surveillance as something that gives you an authoritative kind of look at a site you've chosen to work with uh, drone capture which is mm. you know um, mm. I, I guess not well, partially destroyed and mm. so sort of you know the, there's there's a sense of that authority there is removed by the glitches within that that work as well mm. um yeah if you if you could talk a little bit about mm. that yeah I think I mean you know both of those mediums I guess photography and you know drone imagery um for example you know have, have sort of historically you know come about you know as 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 tools of you know power and control over you know over people and places so you know I sort of really aware of that and that kind of comes to mind often and I think you know we actually did have a conversation about the drone stuff a while ago right when this work was early in its cooking stage yes. um, and how uncomfortable I was actually with using drones and uh, so yeah I think I think that um, you know the image is really seductive. It's something that, you know, can hint as in the photographic image that is perhaps of, of something of, of a particular place or, or you know, in, in my work. Um, it, 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 it's sort of telling and it discloses a certain amount of information, but that information is always, you know, it's bookended by the frame uh, and it, there's limits within that, um, what it can convey and what it can allude to, I guess, and, and the sense that it's, you know it's a sort of partial reality but but I guess we know sort of you know um you know in our sort of world you know that that the image is very much you know a construct um mm. and so that's always been I guess that that's sort of you know on my mind um a lot and I think when these maps came into my hands in around 2017 when I started um you know thinking through these atlases and uh, these were I should say these were three, initially it was one edition, but then I sort of, you know, tried to sort of seek out and find two others. Um, these were three editions of an out-of-date atlas that was initially published by the Reader's Digest, and it was the Great World Atlas, actually, to be um, precise. Mm -hmm. um, and I had three editions that the that were made in 1961, 1968, and 1970, and and I became quite uh, obsessed with trying to work out what over that time had changed or shifted um, and that I don't want to say that as a sort of generalized sort of statement of what you know borders had changed etc but but you know I, I knew that 
you know, obviously across those years, which were sort of pivotal years in, in, in a lot of um, things that were happening in Eastern Europe, which is, you know, my, my connection um, in terms of Poland. But, but I, I sort of wanted to, to kind of query that and sort of unhinge that from its um, right or perceived sort of place of, of, of knowledge and, and power and, 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 and thinking about atlases as, as, as something that were, I mean, that was already superseded. It was obviously from the 70s and we work with very different tech now, right? Um, but thinking about the, um, the Mechator sort of, um, you know, the, the, the way that um, that kind of way of making maps could completely disrupt the logic of alignment and of shape and size of continents, you know, a method that was obviously developed in the 16th century. And, and how, um, you know, for example, uh, is it from, yeah, 1929 or so, the, 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 the surrealist map of the world, you know, really yes. dispelled, like, I mean, for, you know, how amazing that then, yes. you know, this really changed, um, you know, visually uh, alluded to the changing weight um, of, of, of places of power and, and, and thinking about those spaces where, in fact, the Pacific Ocean became the central kind of element, right, in, the, in that sort of, in that map. So, so, you know, but I guess the process of, of getting to this work was very um, playful. It was actually experimenting. It was taking this, these pages, which I took out of the, um, the, one of the sections out of the map and it was sitting here you know on, on this drawing board for a good year before I actually took it into the dark room to see what would happen and 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 very quickly I sort of you know worked out and and, and made some clear decisions around how to work with the material and one of those was not to use glass so glass in you know the photographic dark room when you're working with contact negatives or making contact sheets you know on that technical level you really want precision um, so I really wanted to deny that precision. So I chose not to use glass and I've kept that decision, that, that sort of logic very strictly through all the work that you'll see in the show, including the cyanotypes where I didn't weigh them down. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Spectrum and Descent um, wasn't weighed down when it was made because I wanted the negatives to blow away and be repositioned so each image could be created anew. So, so, so it was sort of, I'm not sure if I sort of, spoken to that really but yeah oh, you did. Was... yeah absolutely and I think one of the things yeah. that though you've looped back around to which is really <laughs> nice is the um uh is the idea of speciality because again mm. in the way that you're working with those and actually acknowledging you know the fact that there is you know a gap or the the, the page mm. might not be mm. flat and those types of things mm. is also mm. pulling away from you know the um the yeah the, I guess the the sort of two-dimensionality of what it is that you're dealing with but also um I guess one of the things that I that I enjoy about your practice as well is that sort of tension between being super precise and very technical mm -hmm. and then allowing things to kind of happen um and and loosening up one element of it so not flattening something and then you get a shift in in the physicality of the work because of that so I think those are mm. those are always really nice kind of tensions and um mm. uh, probably not not only attention but an element of generosity in your work overall which I think is evident in mm. a number of the elements in this exhibition yeah I guess you know I'm sort of uh, I you know so much of the process for me has a knock-on effect on other things like there is sort of decision and logic and, and sort of intention but then there is the other side where you know chance but but things that play out in the studio between different components and between different materials and um you know photographically I guess speaking um at the moment you know it's kind of cyclic um you know and I do often when I use a camera it is in quite conventional ways I mean I still work with um you know medium and large format predominantly um but I don't really rely on my technical ability <laughs> um you know rather than uh you know as opposed to sort of just this exploratory exploratory mm. sort of tool um and you sort of you know you sort of mentioned earlier about this this sort of you know is it documenting is it sort of mm. is what 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 is it is it sort of feeling your way through um and I think it's sort of all of those things but I guess the mechanisms of the apparatus is in the apparatus of the camera, anything like that, including an enlarger or the way that paper or emulsion might behave in certain conditions um, is, is really interesting. But, 
yeah, I guess all those parameters and 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 light and things like that and focus and you know distance mm. of, of object from photographic emulsion and, and what that does and and you know that itself I guess talks about proximity and distance yeah. and um yeah and that those things are, are sort of often in constant flux mm. those the relationships between those things. Yeah, and that idea of flux, I think, also makes me think about um, there's a um, a word that I was considering in relation to both photography and mm. the, and the work is the idea of fixing, and fixing, mm. of course, is so much part of the photographic process. And I was thinking about that in relation to the types of things that you're looking at as well. So, um, so these mm. sheets of paper that are moving as you're printing, uh, so the cyanotype isn't super perfect. It just kind of of, you know, this, this image that, that creates a sort of a shadowy element within uh, the, the work or, mm. yeah, the, um, the mm. page that buckles and then things that are unfixed within the work as well that are um, an ash that has just fallen down. Mm. There isn't a certainty about things and I think that also beautifully relates back to the idea of fiction so uh, that the thing... Uh, I guess that opens up that that relationship to perception that things are not actually mm. fixed, um, mm. and uh, and and maybe even the idea of the uncertainty of uncertainty of location as well that things are mm. not that are not you're not presenting a something that is um, authoritative in its um, uh, view of of the places that you visit or that is not giving us uh, one particular aspect to it and I think we also see it in the multiple ways that you um that you um i guess consider a work it's uh, as i said before mm. it's it's a book and it's an image and it's you know and it's mm. an installation and it's so many different things but i think the idea of fixing um and the fact that you do, you, you have for a long time also dealt with the idea of ruins as in something that is falling apart that is something that is that is changing mm. and that acknowledges a history but is also in a process of, of of decay and so on I think is is really great um and really interesting for um mm. especially a moment in flux that we are in mm. as well so mm. um but yeah I don't know if you wanted mm. to, to to talk a little bit about that maybe as a as a mm. kind of a, a, a closing idea around the idea of um not finishing but having something as a moving well, element yeah I mean I sort of I, I could sort of talk around I mean I love that you sort of you know mentioned the the side of the the, the Azuri window the, the fallen sort of sea arch and Malta as as one of the sites and and you know which sort of fell in this sort of instantaneous kind of moment and, and no one saw it and the story sort of around it um has become that there was there was someone on the cliffs just nearby and, and he was filming or photographing the other side the sort of north that he was facing yeah he was facing this way and you know behind him this thing just sort of you know um, plummeted into the sea and you know this kind of story this sort of idea of whether it's um uh you know fictitious whether it's become you know a sort of local sort of um conversation and gossip and and you know a kind of uh a story around the the sort of fall of that and and I think you know in relation to sort of fixing something and completing something you know I, I'm often sort of not stuck but just wondering when and if and at what point you know work is finished I mean mm. you do the same right we all mm. sort of have this conundrum of when is work complete what 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 point is that and at what point does one work bleed into another and and can those boundaries are they are they blurry or are they are they sort of fixed and I think you know with this show there's I guess I've seen through you know the work that I've developed but through you know Jose's um you know wonderful involvement and any sort of curatorial sort of vision for for the work um how it is quite fluid and I mean at the moment you know they do sit like distinct bodies of work but I do see that um, as a sort of continuum and I think and I think more so actually what, what I'm sort of what I know I know what I've been doing I've, I've been sort of connecting uh images reoccur if you notice mm. if that show like maybe you know if people sort of if you visit the gallery and sort of see that there are there are images that are within 
uh, one mode, like th this sort of works in the frame that that exist or sort of appear momentarily in the other sort of sculptural work. And, and I think this sort of taking something from another part as a point of departure or as a sort of catalyst for the next thing, rather than sort of removing it altogether, it's actually something that I'm enjoying doing, not kind of sealing off the, the, the previous body of work, but, but kind of extending it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a really um, great thing about, uh, you know, an engagement with somebody's practice that is over a number of years. So I've seen mm. your, your, your work mm. for many years. It's great <laughs> to sort of see these things kind of um, maybe take centre stage for a moment and then pull mm. back and then something else comes in and then this thing gets picked up again later on. And I think this this sort of flow on a sort of fluidity in the way that you work and the... Um, and the kind of ebb and flow of, mm. of, of the interest that you pick up on and let go of, you know, those types of things I think make mm. the, the practice fantastic to see over its, um, its, you know, arc of involvement, but also really, um, really active and really um, dynamic within a single exhibition as well. Mm. Just a lot of, a lot of ways of saying something in, uh, in many different ways, I guess. So mm. revisiting re an idea or a series of ideas in many different ways. Mm. And so you're heading off to Bundanum? Bundanum on the weekend. Talking yes. about the, the future mm. and the next thing to come. Yeah. Yes, Bundanum, um, the, the inaugural exhibition for the new um, art museum is called From Impulse to Action. And I've sort of, I've been developing a work over the last year as a commission for that. So that's very exciting, and um, and this show in Sydney, which is great, and we'll also Jose and I will be doing a walkthrough talk of the um, of the exhibition here at UNSW Galleries on the twenty seventh of February. Yeah, fantastic. Bit of a plug there. It'd be great so, to hear about that conversation because I think that curatorial conversation is super interesting. It'd be great to to, mm. to um, yeah to to visit the exhibition mm -hmm. through that conversation yeah I mean because it happens over such a long time doesn't it when mm. you work you know with yeah. a curator and it's a you know when Jose first came to my studio to Newcastle and you know we spent as part of an afternoon sort of looking and talking and thinking and looking and you know you could just see him sort of you know drawn to particular things and yeah anyway it was it was really really great like such great dialogue um yeah um, and also the work is, is sort of, um, I'm developing it into a sort of book, a photo book, an artist book Great. with Perimeter. So, so that will happen later this year, um, which is exciting. So it's sort of on the, literally on my desk just now as I work <laughs> through the final bits, yeah. So we might leave it there. Um, we could talk through a lot of these types of ideas for a lot longer. Mm. Um, and I hope that people who um, have joined us uh, for this talk, we'll also be drawn to the exhibition and to um, to the talk, the floor talk with um, Jose and Isabella uh, sometime during the, what was the date again? 20, 20, 27th of Feb. 27th of Feb. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and thank you so much, Isabella. Terrific to talk and yeah. um, so great to see this exhibition. Mm. Thank you.